Why are you pointing at me? You're supposed to do the... Oh, does that mean start? Yeah, welcome to ah. the <coughs> <Little> Philosopher. <laughs> I can provide the music. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Philosopher and the Fool. I think it's Fool and Philosopher. To the Fool and the... Is it? Might be. Hmm. I can check. Anyways, welcome to the, the PH and F or F and PH, the Fufu. Welcome to Fufu with your host, Cameron, and a special guest today, Connor. I'm the host, or co host. That's how it works. So, special guest, how's it feel to be on my show? It feels like I'm going to be doing all the work and editing later. Yeah. Well, now you know what Hudson felt like, and he had a whole big bay named after him, so isn't that great? What? Ah! That was a laugh track. Um, so we were talking about Hudson earlier. You know, he had a whole bay named after him after the mutiny. So it was after the mutiny. Yeah, because he died in the the water, so they named it after him. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah. Oh, the guy who tried to find the way through North yeah, West and then Passage. Yeah, people mutinied and stuck him in a boat and kicked him off into the middle of the the bay, and then he and his son died out there, probably, or were taken in. Who knows? Frozen to death and eaten by polar bears. Yeah, one of those things. Or he was, like, rescued. No, that was the other guy who... We don't know. There's a different guy they found fro him and, like, three of his men frozen at a block of ice. Yeah, that was in Antarctica. Yeah. With the polar bears. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And the penguins are in... Australia. Fair enough. Fair enough answer. There might actually be penguins in Australia. I don't know. There Most is. Marsupial penguins. Uh, so they're you not know platypuses, right? Okay. They're not actually, marsupial. No, the I penguins in Australia aren't marsupial. They swam there right. because they can swim. And yeah. then they decide they liked it there better than Antarctica because instead of being cold, everything's just poisonous. You are listening to The Fool and the Philosopher. So I invented a game, right? And what you do is you say a mammal, so dog, and then the other player says a weirder mammal, so let's say kangaroo, and then the next player says... And then it goes back to the first player, and they say an even weirder mammal, like uh, anteater. And you go back and forth, and then whoever says platypus first wins. Okay. Because I was thinking about it, right? And like platypus, platypodes, they have... Platypi. Um, no, it's got to be... No. no it's it's got to be platypodes. Anyways, they have beaks, like a duck, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. And then they have, like, they're mammals, though, but they lay eggs. Yeah. But they... They secrete milk through their skin, and the, that's the females. And the males have poisonous spurs in their things. Web feet. Yeah. But, and you're, okay, well, that's pretty weird. I mean, that's all I knew until yesterday. But they also have, like, some sort of magic force field that comes out of their bill that lets them see with, like, a sixth sense of electricity. I thought that was sonar or something. No, had... it's like an electric field. Really? Yeah, that lets them detect muscle movements because every mm. time you move a muscle it fires an el electrons and stuff so they can detect electrical currents with their beak and they have another mechanical sensor that can detect water movement and the delay between the two tells them where things in the water are and it's just they're like robots designed from the greatest parts of the animal kingdom well, i was going to say a weirder animal is a kidnap but i think that's not true anymore yeah no it can it's also lay eggs they're the yeah. other well, well there's, th there's three um things that lay eggs and i think echidnas are two of them echidnas are two of them yeah um wait th does the pangol no the pangolin doesn't i thought it did but did you know that anteaters don't have jaws they have like a tubular skull like it's yeah they, they can't actually open their mouth they yeah have teeth. and um their tongue is twice as long as their body yeah. or maybe it's aardvarks that can't open their mouth and anteaters still mm -hmm. have teeth one i can't remember one or the other but one of them's tongue is really long too they both have long tongues. They're very similar looking. So, it's weird. how did we go from Hudson's Bay to your weird game? Because I said platypus somewhere in there. Oh. But then I, I quickly tried to cover it up so you didn't notice. Mm. But I don't remember why I said platypus. Uh, maybe you could play a game which is um, see how many times in between days it takes you to say platypus. And whenever you say it, you mark it down. You try to find the longest period. There's a game kind of like that in reverse called The Game, mm -hmm. where you lose if you think about it, and so that could be like that. Yeah, but isn't... How do you start the game? Yeah, everyone's playing. It's just, just how it works, I guess. Always? Yeah. It, that's kind of dumb. Well, that's the game. It's, it's a meme. Oh, so this... You'll like this. Is it selfish? No, it's... Sorry. What? 
continue. No, you're, you're confused. In the book, The Selfish Gene, to describe the memes, but the, the yes. memes aren't selfish. Selfish meme, selfish gene. It's no, very Richard, close. Richard Dawkins, right? He said that the, the brain, he thinks humans have larger brains than all other animals for three reasons, besides maybe dolphins. I'm not sure. What about whales? Those are pretty big brains. You probably Comparative could, to their size. It could probably crush you like a whale brain. So like you're walking and a whale brain's dropped and you crush you. Or else if your brain's dropped on a whale, it'd be kind of gross for a whale, but beyond that. Anyways. Three main purposes, right? So he thinks that... I forget what the third one is. Um, Isn't that but, always the case? We always forget the third one. What's the third, Newton's third law? What's the third law? Newton's third law is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Okay, oh, so... Oh, really? I think so. Or maybe that's something totally different. That's but, Einstein. No, Einstein said... No, Einstein has that the energy can't be created or destroyed. That's why he came up with E equals MC squared. Einstein partly. said that... The square root of the difference of the hypotenuse and the penumbra is equal to the opposite square of the other two sides. Go back to what you were talking about before. Well, you keep interrupting me. It's difficult. Okay, so there's three animals, and I don't remember the third one, but there's two purposes for the human brain. Which So the first one is that the human brain is... Um, for, for manipulating your hands, it's, it takes a lot more brain power to do like fine motor manipulations with fingers and stuff. So that's one reason why the brain's really big and huge. And the second reason is to store memes. So I'm sure you'll love that because that's what Richard Dawkins said. And I think he meant that in terms of culture, but I'm sure that can be taken in all sorts of contexts. Um, and the third is for music. Mm. It might be. Mm. Or is music a meme in, under Richard Dawkins? Um, I have no clue. Well, isn't he a meme a perpetuating idea that... Yeah, so music wouldn't be. But I mean, a folk song, like a good folk song that's lasted around, or nursery rhymes that have lasted around, they're like repeated and done over and over again. We right. remember them and they survive, even though they're kind of bad. I don't know, maybe. I guess it depends. Like those car songs might be. Like you just sort of sit down. And yeah. Like a hundred bottles of beer on the wall, a hundred bottles. I don't know. I don't know. Because it has to be the right sort of catchy tune. So maybe it's like... It's like an intentional meme. Mm -hmm. You know, someone had to come up with those car songs. I guess the ones that work. No, I don't know if they did have to come up with them. I think they just appeared. Really? Yeah. But someone had to be like the first person and it spread from so. them. Because you just have like, you have this common folk tune that you hum. Like, <laughs> it just goes back hundreds of years. And then you're just doing something that rhymes slightly and you, you're like, well, I'll just chuck in something like, how many trees do I see? That one looks like a bumblebee. That one looks like it came from the sea. That one looks like the letter T. That one... See? And then you can, it can just appear. Mm, and I then think. the best ones stick around? Yeah, because the, the true memes. Yeah. Not the false memes. Because actually you can't have a dead meme because it's not a meme if it died, right? That whole idea. But... That's, well, those that's, are a little different, though. Because I, well, I, I don't know. Anyway, I think there's a words can have multiple meanings, or they can di diversify from the original. I think um, memes have existed for quite a while, but they got their name like what ten years ago, or something. Uh, no, it was in the '80s, I think. Really? Yeah. Memes have been around since the '80s. Like, I mean, outside of Richard Dawkins' work. Well, he invented them. I know, but I'm saying like the meme being like. Oh, that's such a dank meme. Um, like when I that that happened last year, because the world was sane before then. And no, it's been place. it's been around for longer. It's not 2013, Cameron. It's 2018. I always think it's 2011. Thank you very much. Oh, I always think it's 2012 or 2013. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Because 2011 was a good year. Hmm. Actually, well, well, in a way. How old were you in 2000? And well. Don't want to disclose personal information, but I'm curious if we were the same age as 2013, 2011. Wait, we're four years apart. Never mind. No, it's difficult math, isn't it? <laughs> Leave me alone. Anyways, so I was thinking of we should have like music in our podcast. Maybe we do already. I don't listen to it, but do we? Um, we did. I think in the first one we might have it in the okay. second one, but more sparse I think in between. We should have like an opening song at the start of every one, right? I have an opening song, I think. I'm not sure if I did it in the second one. Oh. You sort of provide... No, right. So the first one actually did songs. 
And then in the second one, you provided them by your, like, you're singing your whole chicken thing. And then the outro was your new Praise Lokum Tali, you singing that. Because I could get away with both the songs being um, copyright free or like intellectual. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it a cover. So I could get away with those being covers. So I used them yeah. instead of um, actual music. Yeah. And you can just change the title of the videos to like, this cover by a young man makes you cry every time. It's so good. Really? You wouldn't believe what he said next because his cover is so good. Um, that's rather dishonest. What? I had great cover. But anyways, I was thinking at the start we should have, like, you know, a little tune that everyone like, oh, I know what I'm listening to, right? Because <laughs> it like, gets you ready for it. And like we have our voice coming over it. So it's like going and it like, fades out and then we're like, welcome, ladies, gents of all ages. And then between Ladies over 20. Why ladies over 20? Because... Cameron, our audience members... I said gents of all ages, so I mm. needed to discriminate mm. amongst the women. Our, our audience... Mm, that sounds bad. ...is some random guy... Who likes Walla Walla Washington. No, he... he oh. It's a different guy now. You and me trying to see if it's working. I think like 10% of the views are me trying to figure out if our podcast is working on YouTube. Is it a guy, you know? Yes, it's a guy. It might be a lady over 20. What? You never know. It's He's the only other subscriber besides... Well, maybe we should, like, stick him in a draw or something. For... Yes. We'll have a <laughs> draw and giveaway for all our subscribers. No, don't say that. We don't want to commit to that. I, I, I don't know how to mail stuff to people. I'm a millennial. Our, our giveaway will be you give us your email... After we say you've won, yeah, and then we spam them. <laughs> no, and then we stick that into a spam bot server. No, we will do a voice recording for them that they can put onto some answering machine or some such thing as a message they want for us to put onto their answering machine. So they have to come up with the clever part, and they get some quality voices in return. My voice is not sub quality, sir. Oh, okay, that's a great reward. Um. I don't know. We have to have something. Like you said, you're a millennial. You don't know how to mail things. Yeah. Or we could, what about like an imaginary t-shirt? Well, imaginary was, t-shirt? Or what if, yeah, and what we could do is we could keep a little profile. We could get a, like a, an Excel sheet or something. And we could keep track of who has which imaginary bits of clothing and points or something. And then we can be like, ah, yes, Douglas 64. You have one imaginary shirt, a red imaginary sock, and, and then be like playing Diablo. But... Instead, we just, they have imaginary clothing. Yeah. And like every five episodes, we could read out everyone's clothing as a special feature at the end. Mm. So they could skip it if they don't want to. Yeah. That's an like interesting that idea. idea. We might proceed with that or might not. It all maybe depends. Maybe they can get cool weapons. Like what? a plus one sword of fire. A plus one sword of fire? Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's like two swords Pl that oh. are on fire. <laughs> Okay. I thought it was going to be plus one, like it's plus one to everything. It doesn't have a... Yeah, it's plus one to how many there are. Mm. It has plus one blade, plus one hilt, plus one pommel. Does it have plus one to plus one? And it's plus one fire. No, that would be... I'd get mad. Okay, Mine, so, like a one plus, does it plus one to one plus? Like you go to a party and you're allowed to bring a one plus? No, it's a plus one. No, it's a plus one. Which is... Actually, no, wait a minute. You say a plus one for parties as well, I think. No, it's a one plus. Or is it plus one? Oh, I don't know. Just in case you forgot, you are listening to The Fool and the Philosopher. So I was thinking anyways, you have the start, right? And you have a song playing. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the Goldbach variations. And Goldbach the... variations? Yeah. Are those um, over 200 years old? I don't know. I, I'm just curious if they're free domain. Yeah, we'd have to check. But it's, it, that lasts for 70 five years doesn't it i thought it was 200 years I, I don't or it's like 15 years after the death of the creator or something i don't it's not 200 years okay so we're probably it's probably free domain well why don't we just look it up okay instead of talking shop winging it no not talking shop just mm. we don't want to wing it okay i think it's fun to know about the like talking shop i consider more like i think the audio level should be at a 3.6. That's no. not how they work. It's more of a 57, a 54, 51. Yeah, exactly. See, like that, that there's, you can't see what we can see. Mm -hmm. I can't even see it, so. Well, right. open up Audacity on your computer. Now, in the top middle, you'll see this little bar. 
Now our most common range is between 12 and 9, which is about the range you want. Although Cameron's sometimes a bit quieter and he's more between the 24 and 21. But that's because he doesn't have the mic in his mouth right now, which is what he enjoys doing. There's a sock on it. Ew. It's, a, it's a designer dress sock. Is it clean? Yes. I don't put dirty socks on things. I don't think we should be giving tips though, because it's been our, like, this is our third one? Yeah. I think we need to do, you have to do something for 100,000 hours, 10,000 hours before you're an expert. Oh dear God. Which is like over a year. That's 10,000 podcasts. No, that's not so bad. Most podcasts are, that have been going on for quite a while, get to about 300 have before you seen they the, die. The, the Rogan experience? No? He's done like 1,200. 1,200? In like an amount of years. He does like three a day and they're three hours long each. So he's already done, he's already done like 3,000 hours. Does he have a team? Probably. Yeah, it's just us and I do the stuff. Yeah, well, why don't you teamwork with yourself? All right, so <laughs> play the Goldberg music and then he'll go, ha, huh, I'm Jeff. What? Aunt, what is the Goldblum, Goldberg, whatever variety of music you're talking about? For some reason, I think you have Goldberg. The opening Goldback. music. Goldback. Ah, oh, so I actually have reason for thinking it's gold. No, wait. Goldberg. Now I don't know. There's a Goldback conjecture, which is in math, and the Goldberg, which is the music, or it's the other way around, and now I don't know. Lovely. One's a math mathy, and the other's a music -y. Okay. So, uh... Today, you learned a valuable lesson, didn't you? Um, I... Yes, did. What'd you learn? Um, that there's a mathematical equation, Goldberg, and... No, not that. <laughs> That's worthless. Uh, you mean outside of what you've been yabbering on for? Yeah. You learned not to wait around, right? Yes. If for something that might not happen, right? You gotta yeah. always be doing something that's worthwhile in the moment instead of waiting for the worthwhile moment. Yes. It's like you gotta seize the gumption by the gills and drown it in the pond of failed dreams. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Huh, <laughs> so random. I am. Ha, ha. So, since you're the, uh, guest of this week's podcast. You haven't finished talking about the intro or how you want to do it. I think it should be there. Okay. And it like plays very briefly and then it fades out and we fade in at the same time and so we overlap it a little bit and then it's kind of in the background for like a minute maybe just quietly. And then Peter's out? Yeah. Okay. Just very quietly though. Not even like quietly. Like very quietly. So you have to really listen for it. Yeah. And then we have outro music. Uh, we could. It could be a, the Goldback for, um, variations in reverse. Wouldn't that sound kind of bad? It'd probably just sound creepy. And, and the, but think about it, it'd be like... Alright, so I'm the um, guest. What? Stop that. <laughs> Behave. You. <laughs> Are you trying to speak backwards? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I... <laughs> so I'm the guest. Okay. On today's show. All right. Can I be home? Okay. Sure. So you have to have the sun in your eyes for the first round. Usually you design... I don't know actually how you usually design a field. I would figure like... If I, if I was the home team, I would make my side the half that placed the eyes, the sun in the eyes of my opponents, I think. That well, if you had, like, a home and away, but your stadium actually rotated, so you could always have the away yeah. team in the sun, even when you switch halves. Yeah, so they wouldn't know, and they'd just be like, wow, we have bad luck, the sun's moving fast today. Yeah. That's kind of devious. Yeah. Probably only cost a couple billion dollars, too. Oh, those stadiums can... Yeah, those stadiums probably cost around that. No, I mean, like, the giant rotational thing for your, your giant stadium. <laughs> uh, I guess so, and... Making it quiet. Yeah. So you're the guest today. Yeah. So as a guest, you have to do, you have to do twenty push-ups. No, you have to answer the questions. The questions that we pose to all guests. Okay. Um. What is your favorite 
story involving freshwater fish? I think um, my favorite story involving freshwater fish was um, back when I was in elementary school, we did this uh, spring camp, right? Yep. And I have a friend who was very much into fishing. Wrong. Wrong? <laughs> right. Anyway, so Wrong. friend very much into fishing. And um, there's this little creek and he just could catch fish after fish after fish. And um, one point in time, he asked me to help him bludgeon a fish. And that wasn't my favorite thing. My favorite thing is while he's fishing, some other kids um, decide to do some spear fishing, And they're allowed to do that. And so they're doing the spear fishing, and one of them went a little too low down in the water, and they were like trying to chase the fish, and his line went out, and he caught a fish, and they speared it at the same time, and it continued. Okay. Um. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> right. Um. And so. They couldn't decide who got the fish because one of them speared it and the other one hooked it. But the only reason I think that one person speared it was because he had been drawing it in so it kind of escaped out of the way of the spear. So that's um, one of my favorite stories involving freshwater fish. Hmm. So if you're... The silence won't be as long as it was. But if you're wondering why I just start spluttering, he's cutting his pants up with a scissor. Scissors? Hmm. Okay. What's a scissor? There isn't a scissor. Why is it scissors then? It's scissors. But it sounds pearl pluralized. It's a verb. It's scissors. But it sounds plural. No, it's verbified. Verbified. Yeah, it's scissors. You can scissor something though. Yeah, but this object scissors. Get me this object which scissors things. Does it have a proper name then, or is it just scissors? I wonder why it's in different languages. Scissero. <laughs> in every other language. What about German? Wouldn't it be like pig clipper? No, it's Cesaro. It's the one word that doesn't involve pigs in German. Really? Yeah. Okay. Does that look even? Sure. It looks lovely. I'll be back. Don't be back. Wow, he is so invested in doing this. He, he has to go cut his pants up with scissors. And he's like doing some sort of hipster fashion design. Ah, well, since I'm the guest, I guess we should continue interviewing the guest. So, hello Connor. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. What are you doing right now? Oh, I'm on this podcast with you. Oh, that's grand. I'm also on this podcast with you. Isn't that right, lovely? Job. You feel time. So, um... Oh, so I can't continue my thing because now you're back, you just start talking. Yes, yes. it's about me, right? Yes. Oh, cool. Um... You should save that one and like isolate it and play it back all the time. Oh, I have a whole bunch of things I can isolate and play back. Nice. Like saying that I am in charge here? Uh, no. That's not one of them. Like, well, it could be now, though. Yes. You didn't say it with enough gumption, though. Right, so do you have any um, topics to, that you prepared for this? There was one like little thing I wanted to tell you about, which I just think is interesting and kind of want to share. Mm -hmm. Which is um, the foxes at our dad's house. Mm. We have six of them, and there's like four kids, two parents. And I think my dad is starting to feel a bit um, sad that he doesn't have a pet. So he's um, started getting them like squeaky toys. And the other day he like threw the squeaky toys at the foxes, and they grabbed the squeaky toys and ran off, and it was just this squeaking as they ran off, squeaking the squeaky toys in their mouths. And now I feel like the neighbors are going to like hear this phantom squeaking and have no idea what it's about because there's and people like walking through the woods will just hear this squeaking because there's a fox somewhere and its den was a squeaky toy, just hmm. chewing on it. And he also um, I don't know if he's done it yet, but he's planning to give a tug of war toy to the kids when they all come out to play because they sometimes do that in the morning because you're not allowed to feed the animals, but it doesn't say you can't give them toys. So that was just one interesting thing. It's not really a topic. It's an interesting little story. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to proceed. Like, have topics or stories or like the question of the day. Okay, have a, have a question of the day. Let's, what's the question of the day? I'll answer. It. All right. Um. Well, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or not to have a question of the day. 
And it's more like the question of the three months. Okay, what's the question of the three months? Um, why are you making your pants shorter? Because they're too long. Is that the long and short of it? Yeah. Ow, I stopped myself. Okay. Um, yeah, so I had a thing about um, game design. Yeah. Which I... In Cameron's Game Design Corner, or whatever this segment's called. Cameron's Game Design Corner? I don't know. You call it whatever. And, uh, Cameron's Game Design Corner! Woo! Hello, and welcome to Cameron's Game Design Corner. Today we'll be looking at the idea of stories in games. Now, a lot of people when I say I don't like stories in games, misunderstand me. They think I don't like stories in games. But what I actually mean by... Okay, I can understand the confusion. But what I actually mean <laughs> by that is that um, games... Sorry, I said um, and now I pointed it out so it's even more of an interruption. Okay, let's start again. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Cameron's Game Design Corner. Today I'll be talking about stories in games. When a lot of people hear me say I don't like stories in games, they misunderstand me because they think I don't like stories in games. But what I actually mean is I don't like it when the game creators make the stories for me. So I might as well be watching a movie or reading a book if they are going to make the story. Because games are experiences, most uh, primarily. And what you want to get from a game is a... Um, you, want, you want it to be a medium to create your own stories. So a game that is just all story-based is more of a book that you can click that you have to click occasionally so it's actually more work than reading a book for the same result often less because they're not as good as books um, I've heard there's good ones out there like Planescape Torment and stuff but I generally don't like them um, the one exception to this rule would be a game like Portal where the story doesn't intrude on the gameplay in the slightest so it's just a little happy little bonus but, uh, so if you're a game if you're making games I would very much like you to focus on making situations which allow for unique experiences rather than on writing because writing should be left to books all right well i have some thoughts on that actually mm -hmm. so first it sounds a little least writing should be left to books mm -hmm. because sometimes maybe they want to have a story in their game and maybe that's part of it and sometimes it's feels like you are in their story. Like, some people like that. Not everyone is like you. Some people actually play a game for the story. Like Yeah, but what I'm saying is they're wrong when they do that, right? Cause... No, they aren't. <laughs> they, yes, they... because they could get a better story from a book. Or they could but they create are not... their own story. They're not earning that story. Because a part of video games, I think, is you earn the story. Like, um... Yeah, that's ridiculous, isn't it? No, it's... It's like a part of it. It's you know like, oh, use... that, and like, all right, so... You know what? No. You already worked for like two hours to earn that story. You don't need to earn it again in your spare time. No, so, in, um... Unless you're in communism, and then maybe they make sense. Was it, um, the gay Final Fantasy, like, you, over the series, you get like really invested in the game, and like the characters and the story of Final Fantasy. And then at one point, I don't think this is a spoiler anymore, I haven't played the game myself, I just know about it, but um, this one character kills another one and it's really devastating, but you have to get to that cutscene and it's sort of like worked up to it and it's something that happens and you're sort of held there captive our audiences it happens. And that's like something you can, like you work up and earn that experience even though it's terrible, it's a really powerful thing, it sort of shapes the game and stuff. That's not the best example mm. of it. Like, I'm trying to think of a better example. Um, like, Okami's story is alright, but you progress through the story. You're, sort of, you're doing a game and a story at the same time. You progress through it, and by doing the game, you get the story. And it's like this... Well, you get punished for doing the game, and they force you, the game to stop with the annoying cutscenes. They have to smash the continue button through. And, and... <laughs> so when... When you're playing Pokemon, you don't like talking to random strangers who don't input anything into the game, or just like say some silly little fact? Yeah, no, I just click on them to see if they'll give me something. See, I think it's not... 
I don't think it's the games. I think it's you. No, I think I'm right, though, in this case. Like, normally I would... I... Normally... <laughs> you see, normally I would actually think there's, like, a nuanced point of view. <laughs> but in this case, I think I'm actually right. And I think people are just suffering from lesser experiences. And they don't realize that there's something better out there. I would encourage people who enjoy stories and games to feel a bit more miserable about their happiness and be more elitist and <laughs> condescending. Mm -hmm. So what's your opinion on um, light novels then? Light novels? Yeah. Um, fine with them. Do you know what a light novel is? No. Oh. Is that like a s small novel? Alright. Do you know the genre of Japanese dating games where you're trying to get different girls and it's like tons and tons of text? Uh, yeah. Alright, so a light novel is one of those, except it's not specifically a dating sim. Right, and it, do you have choices in it? Yeah, you have like, you, it's sort of, it's like, so it's like a choose your own adventure. Well, it depends, like sometimes you can actually like walk about the map and interact with things and like a point and click mixed with stories sometimes, or sometimes it's mm. choose your own adventure and... Yeah, I think or, I'm fine with that, it's not a game though. No, it's like a branching story. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a game, I'd call it a story. Mm. So like a fight I, or... I don't know. What about fighting fantasies? What's your opinion on those? Um, I don't know. They're, I think it's kind of silly how... They're you, like luck. Yeah, they're luck. It's like... It's know. a book that you can be unfortunate in. It's like a book you can lose. Kind of kind of like the Choose Your Adventure. Yeah. And would it Choose Your Adventure be a game? I don't know, because they're kind of... It's totally luck-based, isn't it? So, what about... Although, like, you're just... Especially Choose Your Adventure, because mm -hmm. you can make the craziest decisions and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, you so it just stop. You don't like stories in games, I guess. unless they don't get in the way of the game. What about like um? So Portal Portal is a very good. Is the story is great because it's it's there, but you can keep playing. It doesn't get in the way. So you probably haven't played it much, haven't? But I've heard about this um, Dark Souls, right? Yeah. Doesn't have much of a story. Yeah. And it doesn't give you exposition. Yeah. But you can find little bits of l bits of lore, and it's like a very creative world in its own way. Yeah, that's very cool. Like you it. like that? Yes, I like that. Yeah, because Dark, Dark Souls is very popular, partly because it's a good, challenging game, but, but also is... because of that thing, that like hidden lore. Like, it doesn't give you anything. What I'll say about that, though, is that is a ton of work on the developer's part. Because you basically go through all the work of writing a story, and then you don't actually ever show it to anyone. So, And you hope that they find it out which is it's it's a big risk and it's so what, impressive what about fnaf then and like yeah that's another impressive one um but that that again it doesn't get in the way of the gameplay so mm. i don't, I don't but mind. like with fnaf it's sort of a part of the gameplay trying to find that i think for some people anyways yeah but that's not actually what it's about like you can mm. have people that craft wild theories about lord of the rings but you can just read the books as well yeah okay so um that's the other thing. Multiple endings in games. It's like, oh, your imp your decisions matter. But what it actually does is it means that players will just play until they get every ending and just waste their time. So mm -hmm. I don't think multiple endings are good either. I I think emergent storytelling is the most important um, feature of storytelling in games, not having a story shoved down your throat. Okay. But, uh, I, I still like stories sometimes. Like, Baldur's Gate. I like the story in Baldur's Gate. In Baldur's Gate is, I don't know, it, it is sort of like a choose your own adventure, but there's also definitely the game aspect to it, and like someone's walking around, and you can just hit them with a fireball and completely change the world by fireballing Gorion. Mm. Like, but that's sort of, I guess that's like a combination of your emergent storytelling, like you can create your own story, but there's so many stories options in it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and I'm thinking of like Battle Block Theater where the character um, where the story is very separate from the game, but they're both quite good. Mm. And I actually like that. And I don't know if the story would work as a standalone. So maybe maybe stories can work in games, but it's not my thing. Hmm. Ha. Sorry. No, I, I should go, yes, Cameron. No. How, how, how do you go, hmm, yes, your opinion has been changed, but you don't set, do it condescendingly or a hat got you or... A... Why don't you just not do it and just smile smugly to yourself? I don't know. You, I feel like smiling smugly to yourself is like lying. You're not expressing your... That's not lying. Oh, but you're not like talking about your evil intentions. But... If they're even evil or not. But you don't need to 
declare I win whenever you win and I lose whenever you lose. You can just know that you have. And okay. I guess. Yes. That's my that's my opinion. What about the score story of Skyrim? It has a story? Uh, well, each there's like a bunch of individual quests with their own little storylines, and mm. there's actually a lot of American story to it. I just kind of click on things and then follow the markers on the GPS. Oh, lovely. Yeah. All right. So there's all these books that you can sell for like a dollar, but <laughs> you know that's Baldur's Gate. Um, yeah. Skyrim is like three septums to five septums. Still not great. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, like, huge on story in games. I think if I want story, I'll get a good story from something that knows what they um, from a different source. And if I want a good game, I'll play a good game. But I'm not, um, I think, I think, it, I think the resource, how about this? It takes way more investment to have a good story and a good game, then just make a good game, and you're probably even the best game stories aren't going to be up there with book stories, so hmm. y you should just give up and not try. Well, here's an interesting question. So, Brothers, right? Yeah. Would that work just as a book? No, but the game, the story is told through the gameplay. So that's, I guess that's my takeaway here, is I think story should be told through the gameplay rather than tacked on. Like cutscenes? Yeah. Okay, what about um, cutscenes where you have to mash buttons? Those are worse than normal cutscenes. Because you have to work for them? Yeah, and, it, and also that isn't, unless you're playing Dance Sense Revolution, it's just not acceptable type of gameplay. So you don't like Quick Time? Not at all. What about Shadow of Mordor Quick Time? Not at all. Really? Although, the one thing about Shadow of Mordor Quick Time is that it lets you come back, so it's like a but it's kind of like making a deal with the devil. Like, sure, you you live, but you you feel dirty afterwards. So, <laughs> so, what about just the quick time of like um, someone's about to throw a spear at you, and so you have to tap C to dodge, or well, you can do it ahead of time though if you see them coming. I and, guess so. And I don't think that's the same as quick it's time. Just, it's been really helpful. It's just reacting in a fighting game. It's just well, no, the game's telling you how to survive, and so mm. I guess you can take that how you will. You don't have to do it. It doesn't end your game experience immediately, like quick time events or whatever. Yeah, but it's yeah. also probably a good idea to listen to it. What about um, was that the ultimate stick fight or something or what's that? That game where you just you tap two buttons. Oh. Two finger death punch. Oh, that's. Is that a rhythm game under your clarification? Not a quick time game. Yeah, it's a rhythm game definitely. Okay. Well, if you had like. I say quick time is just a cutscene that you can lose. What about? A quick time in a video game, that's a rhythm game. Um, or would you not like that because you're, you're there for the game experience and then you have this weird subpar game experience that's just tacked on you don't want? Yeah, well, I don't like, I don't like losing a cutscene because cutscenes are bad enough, but having to do them over and over again is just... So, I take it you really like Telltale games? Really? No, I really don't like Telltale games. Come on, there's so much to Telltale games. They're like... Purely cutscenes and so well no they're cutscenes and point and click adventures. Yeah. Yeah. People people buy them obviously so good good for them but that is like the worst combination of every possible thing in games I can imagine basically in one place so they even have cover shooters in Telltale games. They also don't even give you the full game and it's it's just I don't know how they exist. I think it's just because people don't know what books are like they they haven't read a book I, I don't know like i know some people that read a lot and they play telltale games so i i don't know i think brain parasites are they're oh well, that's not very nice what if our one viewer is like the lead designer of telltale games and now they're really sad well you lost us our one viewer then if you did that well and i'll be very upset with you as well well no no i don't i don't want to be mean to them i just yeah. I, you just don't like telltale games yeah i just like they, they, they no Cameron they people the in. people are individuals they are, they can be yeah, each to their own but I think brain parasites isn't a fair thing to say about people that like their games okay I, I think that at most it's like mild dementia <laughs> uh, no that's I if you like no brain parasites isn't harsh enough these there is something wrong with these people it's not just brain parasites it's probably like demon packs or something like they make deals with demons yeah, they, so they, they could enjoy those shadow things of war. I, 
Shadow of War. So they that like Faustian bargain and lost their dignity. But Shadow of War, I really, I'm very happy for what happened with that game. I think I might actually play it in the future. Oh yeah, Shadow of War did a great thing where they, it's this great marketing thing where you do something bad and then you take it back so you look better than someone that didn't do the bad thing in the first place. And they're heroes. But actually, good on them for getting rid of their whole microtransactions thing. Well, if you, it is so worth it for a games company to do that, or was for like the past two years, is really worth it. But you can only like do that for so long before gamers get upset. Yeah, and yeah, no, I don't. I think micro, well, that form of them is on their yeah. way out. There's, there's going to be something new in the future, but. Something new, people try and make money off their products, just trying to live. Well, I saw, you know, when you look at, like, um, the, sometimes games have make you agree to these things, the, the, um... End user agreement? Yeah. And a lot of them are along the lines of, because I, I read a few, and a lot of them are along the lines of, like, this is a license, not a purchase of a product that you own. So you don't actually own games. Really? Yeah. And it's, it's not like, you know, you buy a... A walking stick and you can now do whatever you want with it you can like, carve ancient runes into it or hit people over the head with it and like the company's not gonna mind it's well are you allowed to resell that walking stick you bought uh, I don't know but then how do pawn shops work um, are pawn shops legal I don't know maybe not it's well technically it's not exactly legal to resell video games either or like uh, secondhand bookstores aren't legal either so I, I don't know how those work because you're not allowed to resell books, you're not allowed to resell games. So, I, I don't know. But yeah, you don't actually own them. It's mm. kind of because they're intellectual properties, I guess, so... Mm. Well, like, I you, don't know. You don't actually own your house either. No? No. But if you're um, living in a place with a country, which is mostly everywhere, then it's most likely that... Hello! The, I live at a place with country! Yeah, well, it's most likely that... um. The country owns your property and your house, oh. and you just you've paid to have the privilege of it permanently. But um, if you can't give that privilege away to someone else after you die, then it goes back to the government. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I might be completely wrong. No, I find that generally the best place to find any sort of expert lawyers on ownership and like fair use and stuff is. Right here on YouTube. So, I believe you are an expert. How? Oh. Because you look in YouTube comments and they're full of experts. You And, like, opinion pieces, experts everywhere. And, so I believe you're an expert. Are you making fun of people on YouTube? Uh, no. Not at all. There's no satirical things going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, there might be. Just a little bit. I don't think we should um, exclusively say that we're on YouTube because, like, maybe someday we'll diversify off YouTube and put these somewhere else. Yeah, and the, these will be showcased in the halls of the um, the founders of the Golden Age. Yes, it's actually kind of interesting. Remember that? Um, so back when we were younger, I don't know if we talked about this. Did we talk about this? I don't know what you're talking about. The tape we recorded. We recorded it. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's assume we didn't. I was going to say that we should um, play it, though, on this. Um, I, I don't think we should. But mute it. No. And anyway, so we recorded this tape, which was po basically meant to be, like, I don't know, found footage or something, or, like, a time capsule for people, like, hundreds of years in the future to find and listen to. And it is completely inaccurate recountings of the past. And it's, like, some sort of prank from the past. It's, like... This is the only record we have of the past, but it's actually wrong, and it's just... Yeah, it makes you wonder how many times it's happened. I don't think people... Well, actually, if we thought like that, people probably think like that. Aren't we people? Yes, we are people. You don't sound like you... That sounds fake. That doesn't sound like you think you're people. I... I can't help but feel slightly offended. But... You're sewing your pants! So? <laughs> Am I so disinteresting to you that you ha have to do something else to fill your time while I'm talking? Or you are so uninvested in this podcast that you're just like, alright, I might as well do something else. It's almost, 
Like, know how people listen to podcasts while doing things that are slightly boring? You're recording a podcast while doing something that's slightly boring. <laughs> I mean, perfect. that's... No, it feels offensive. If you're still in your pants right now and listening to this, be well aware that the per- You're what in a- good company. What? Yes, your company is someone else. I don't know. So I read the other day, um, I just, in the um, statistics, that um, there are actually more podcasts out there in the world than there are people. Um, and Really? We're just, yeah, in the statistics it said so. More podcast episodes or more podcasts? More podcasts. There, there is over 10 podcasts. Um, um, yes, there is over 100 podcasts as well. Yeah, and so I was thinking... There's over 7 billion podcasts? I'm thinking that we're contributing to the problem, right? And so, but at the other hand, there's like niches, right? So there's going to be someone out there who... Really likes Walla Walla Washington. But like, yeah, or there's going to be, you know, there's just always a, there's a niche for everything. Like, so having however many thousands of podcasts there are. Billions. I don't think there's that many. It's crazy. Well, that you said there's more podcasts than people. Yeah, but I mean, how many people are there really? Seven billion. Yeah, but are there? Yes. But there might not be. Here's the thing, though. Do you count as a person if you're younger than two? Yeah. Uh, I guess you won't be listening to podcasts. Well, no, I just mean like in general. Yes. By law, you do. Yeah, but like, do you though, like in, in reality? Cause do you count as a person if you're over 100? I think so. Although that is another thing. See, like, that's tricky. Um, but I just totally made the statistic up. But anyways, um, it is... That's the title. What? I totally made that statistic up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was thinking a niche, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's just a ridiculous amount of podcasts out there, but I'm sure there's someone that's like, I could really do with a podcast about, like, miniatures painting, but it focused more on, like, the blue spectrum of colors, and and only about, like, and I don't want to, like, just, like, Warhammer or something. I, I, don't, I don't play those games. I play, like, um, I play Advanced Wars the Miniatures game. It's a game I homebrewed with my friend and posted on a forum that's now gone, but some people have downloaded the PDF, so... And there's going to be a podcast out there for that guy. And, um... I don't think there is. So I think we're kind of like that, where we're for people that just really want disjointed rambling and, um, pant sewing. Yes, disjointed rambling. Cameron's pant sewing tips. Sew them while you're wearing them, <clears throat> but wait, wait, don't I'll sew do... it onto your skin. Wait, wait, I'll do, I'll do one of those intro things again. Cameron's point pa- pa- pant sewing tips. Hello, and welcome to Cameron's pant sewing tips. The first tip is sewing machines. You might think they're easier to use, but they are just devil tools. I would avoid them at all costs. Instead, you should hack at the base of your pants with scissors, and then roughly... Just do a bunch of loops until your pants stick together, kind of, and call it a day, because it's, it's better this way. And also don't stab your leg, because that, that would hurt. I'm wearing my pants right now while sewing them, so... Because um, that would be, that'd be like, kind of crude if I wasn't wearing pants while doing a recording, I think. Yes, thank you for wearing your pants. Yeah, but it does make sewing them slightly different. Oh, I just got some leg hair in there. That's fine. Yeah. I don't need to take these off right now. Right. Yes. So there is a lot of podcasts. I mean, the podcast is like usually is an hour to two hours long, right? Yeah, I think it's maybe There's like 24 a... hours in a day. Yeah. A, one person isn't just going to listen to just one podcast. Well, but you have to do other things in your life than listen to podcasts. No, podcasts are a background thing. You're like in your bobbed cat. You're bored. You're just plowing yeah. gravel. You're going to listen to a podcast. Yeah, I don't maybe you want to listen to people incoherently rambling. But I think, you know, I don't think that's good for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think... I don't think you should listen to podcasts. I don't think they're a good thing because, um, <laughs> right. I'm going to find a different partner because I'm finding a different person. I to think with boredom... you know, I'm a friend who really wants to do, um, the podcast with me. And I think he'd be a better fit than you. I'm He's wondering... really clever and smart and he actually likes podcasts and thinks they're a good idea. Right. And they're great, but I don't think they're good because, um, I don't, th- I think that your, your mind go, when you are listening to podcasts or recording them and um <laughs> you're literally treating this podcast like you're listening to it like while you're recording it you're 
Um, because boredom is good for you, I think. Because it lets you think about things. But if you're always, like, not thinking about things, then you, you don't think them through. And you end up, like, jumping off a cliff on a shovel because you think that's the right thing to do. And it's not. I agree with what you're saying, but you're saying it wrong. <laughs> hey, it's a callback. Um, no, I did, like, I've come to a point in time where it's like, you know, always doing something. Like, you're eating food and you're reading a book and you're, like, going for a walk and listening to a podcast. You're, like, doing all these things. And you're doing something else while doing them to occupy the empty space in your mind because you don't want any silence. You always want sound because yeah. if there's no silence, then you have to think and thinking's effort. And so it's easier not to think. But when you stop thinking for a long time, you sort of just start melting away from yourself. And you just sewed your pants together. All right. Uh-oh. Um. Anyways, so your main brain just starts going. And I have been thinking, like, I want to, like... I, I kind of want to, like, make skits that can film, like, live-action skits. Ow. Yep. Even though I don't know if we have the best camera for it. We have the greatest camera. Anyways. All right, yeah, so I want to do some live-action skits, but I don't know if I can do the writing for them because I just can't think on it. And it's like, I used to think all the time, have all these ideas, and now I don't. It's realized because I've filled all the time I used to think with, with things. Yeah. So now I'm trying to unfill my time so I can think more. Yeah, like I notice, and I don't want to sound like too much of a hipster or something, but um, I noticed that, because I stopped watching YouTube for a month, and I noticed that I wanted to do other things way more often, like play video games or read a book or something, because I was so bored I'd rather do anything than just sit around. So I actually started doing other things than just defaulting to YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. And even like the good stuff, like, you know, educational podcasts and stuff, mm. they're just, um, I don't know. I think that people that think there's problems with things probably are just addicted to them and there's no problems with them at all. Yes. Um, like, you know, people are like, man, heroin's so bad for you, but I think it's only bad for you if you're addicted to it. Like, uh, actually that's true. I think it's true of everything. Yeah. Um, man, bullets are so bad for you. Yeah, but only if you're addicted to, like, eating them or something. Um, I'm so addicted to getting shot by bullets. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? I mean, I took one back in Nam, and now I just can't stop. But if you weren't addicted to them, then they wouldn't be a problem, right? Because you wouldn't be shooting yourself, because that's crazy. But, you know what I mean? Like, I think... Um, so I think there's something to be taken there. Like, people to say games are bad for you, or books are bad for you, or whatever. Like, I think they just... They themselves have problems with them. So I probably have a bit of a problem with you, too. Um, so... Just listen to this podcast while driving your bulldozer or whatever. And don't, don't... Mind. And we're espousing not to. No, actually, I've come to a point but where... I think there is something important about just having time to not... In be inundated with yes. stuff at all times. Yeah, no, like, like... Sometimes you just have to contemplate the dishes you're washing, you know? Yeah, just... Or just think about things, like... When you go to the toilet, just go to the toilet. Don't do anything else while doing it. Well, I don't know. But, well, that was pretty boring. You know, really no, so but you can get some of your best thinking time while on the toilet. I have my best thinking time while walking, in the shower, or just about to go to sleep, and then I have to write it down and I get enough sleep. Um, yeah, but I mean that best thinking time when you're about to go to sleep is because you're. It's because you're not trying so hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not doing anything else. Yeah, so I think, don't listen to this podcast. Go out and do something. 